Hey, it's your buddy Peace and Harmony here with you here today. Adrenal fatigue after dealing with and coping with narcissistic, psychopathic, emotional abuse, or maybe even physical abuse. The encounter uh, with the narcissist or the psychopath can be a, a twisted and long road. And the longer you've been on the road with them, the more intense probably your stress is going to be in, in terms of trying to come out of the relationship, heal the relationship, and move on. And everybody responds differently. People have their different levels of sensitivity, their different backgrounds, their different foundations that make them subject to um, handling uh, such disappointments in life in different ways, in different mechanisms. But one thing for sure is that it's usually unexpected. And they say, well, you know, learn to expect the unexpected. However, something like this, when it hits so close to home, so personal, it's very difficult to do. So, you know, this, this situation creates quite a bit of uh, shock, disappointment, depression, and stress um, after exposing this type of personality disordered person and finding this new quote-unquote unexpected information in your life and this stress can be interpreted by the body in terms of a danger a threat to yourself as a living organism and the stress the flight or flight is a uh, symptomatic uh, response within you deals with uh, is expressed or activated when you experience a state of fear or a threat and the the exposure to this over a long period of time, which means over a couple hours, a couple of days, a couple of weeks, a couple of years, it can start to tax the body. Tax the body meaning overburden the body, over um, overstimulate the body, especially the adrenal glands, which uh, produce. Uh, you can do research on this, but uh, the adrenal glands are what kind of release the hormones for dealing with stress, particularly number one, cortisol. So when the body releases this hormone, it's going to activate you. It's going to give you a certain kind of energy spike to deal with the situation. For example, you know, for example, you've heard of an adrenaline rush. You know, some people might get an adrenaline rush when they race cars or they race motorcycles or you know some people gamble and they get an adrenaline rush or from shopping they get an adrenaline rush um, you know you might consider those kind of positive adrenaline rushes you know skydiving thing all these things you know you hear about the adrenaline rush uh, the adrenaline junkie um, you know these are usually for you know purposeful maybe positive planned events so they have a different impact on the body However, now imagine adrenaline rush when it's in the state of fear or threat or intimidation or negativity and it's interpreted by the body in a different manner. In other words, it's not planned for, it's unanticipated and it's coming from a negative space. Uh, for example, um, and I use you know, these analogies, but for example, you know, being attacked by a bear or a tiger. You know, we're not living uh, in the jungle here. Um, but, you know, it's the same type of thing, you know, if you were to be approached by, let's say, a venomous snake or a cobra uh, crosses your path or a bear or a lion, you know, who maybe is going to attack you or bite you or sting you with a, a venomous poison. So your body is going to have an adrenaline, what they call a fight or flight, you know, which is uh, an alert to your sympathetic nervous system to move like to get going it the effect you know sharpens your vision it heightens your senses and it gives you a, a quick burst of energy for handling this in a successful and life protecting manner now that is the you know fight or flight response in a, a quick nutshell however once we we have uh, it's been found that people who undergo chronic stress uh, particularly that, you know, as a result of physical and emotional abuse, uh, chronic stress can be exasper exacerbated, compounded by busy, hectic lifestyle, a burden of having to take on uh, 
new responsibilities such as that from you know having to raise children on your own or taking increased financial responsibilities on um, handling other you know huge life uh, monumental tasks like going through a divorce uh, relocating being newly in charge of uh, other dependents or finances these are you know now becoming new life challenges and new uh, real, you know, monumental uh, issues in, in one's life. And they can become perceived as obstacles and, you know, create kind of a, a compounded chronic stress. And that can cause really an adrenal fatigue where the body is over-releasing this adrenal. Uh, you know, the adrenals are, are constantly being pushed, pushed, pushed. And what ends up happening, uh, the, the specifics aren't really fully understood. It's not a firm medical diagnosis. But it is getting uh, quite a bit of news and attention, um, especially because of the increased stress that we're seeing uh, today. Um, the rise in divorce, the, ri uh, the rise in disease, the rise uh, in women in the workplace, uh, the rise of changing roles. Um, in today's society, all this creates a lot of chaos and hectic uh, experiences for people where they don't feel adequately prepared to deal with this, this situation and they go through a chronic stress. And a chronic stress, I mean, you can even encounter it if you've had to move. Um, you know, it's just, you know, think of, um, you know, planning a vacation. That's a, a positive adrenal rush but having to move suddenly, or having a, a sudden news that a family member is ill. Now, you know, oftentimes someone who has a strong foundation, you know, they can handle these, but when it's uh, numerous and chronic, the body can just basically become worn out. And uh, adrenal fatigue is just that, it's the fatigue of the endocrine and, and hormones in that fight or flight uh, system and m many of the symptoms are, are uh, exactly that. Uh, fatigue, tiredness, depression, um, muscle cramping, um, weight issues, uh, particularly weight gain around the stomach, uh, different neuropathy sort of pains, um, trouble sleeping and insomnia. These are just a, a few of the symptoms that can be encountered. Now, of course, it would seem common sense to reduce the amount of stressors and then the body would uh, definitely you know go back to adjusting now some of this does does happen but sometimes the body needs a little bit of nudge and a little bit of extra TLC and care to repair itself and if you find yourself really getting chronically fatigued or so severe uh, muscle cramps um, ex extreme frustration agitation um, anger sadness, uncontrolled sadness, um, you know, nerve, nerve pain in the, in the, uh, in the leg, uh, the back, um, where it becomes very difficult for you to function, uh, definitely, you know, consult a, uh, your primary care physician, let them know your symptoms and you are seeking some help. Um, chances are they can, um, you know, run some tests and help uh, take a look at this and at least discuss it with you rather than suffering alone and in silence. Um, especially when it becomes dysfunctional to the point where you find it difficult to work. A lot of people can't maintain the same, um, you know, full-time schedule of hours. You know, it's becoming a very difficult dysfunctional situation. If that is the case, definitely recommend speaking to your doctor. Sometimes they'll recommend um, a light uh, antidepressant uh, this is very effective for t uh, treating, you know, depression, which can be a result from this, and help alleviate some of those symptoms and help you kind of adjust back from adrenal fatigue. So, uh, please get these symptoms checked out and uh, take it easy on yourself and reduce the stress, the noise, and the added, uh, co you know, uh, complexity and simplify your life so that some peace and harmony and relaxation will be restored to your life. Peace and harmony here with you here today. Please share and subscribe for more great tools, videos, and discussions. Make it a beautiful day.